Metal Jesus here, and today I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite games is Portal. Now, if you found this review thinking that I'm going to be reviewing the Valve Portal that came out just a couple years ago, the first-person puzzle shooter, love that game. That is not it. That's not the first Portal game. Uh, the first Portal game was actually released uh, for the Commodore Amiga and the Commodore 64. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And i got to tell you, when I first got on the web, and you sort of see, you know, all these people that, that are really into games, like you are, and talking about a really obscure stuff. One of the things that really excited me the most was to find people who had also played this amazing game back in the 80s. It was so rare that even people who had Commodore 64s and Amigas like me, uh, they hadn't heard of it. I mean, it, it must have flopped, which is sort of mind-blowing to me because the game is so killer, even to this day. The storyline is awesome. So... Today I'm going to cover Portal. Portal by Activision was released in 1986 for the Amiga, the Macintosh, the Commodore 64, the Apple II, and PC. It's best described as an interactive novel, but played in the first person almost like a role-playing game. You play as a lone astronaut that is unexpectedly returned to Earth after spending over a hundred years traveling to the nearest double star, only to come home and find the entire planet devoid of any humans. In the opening introduction from the manual, you use your spaceship for several months traveling from continent to continent, finding only overgrown trees, broken down vehicles, abandoned buildings, and the remnants of a people who have been gone for several decades. The only thing left to greet you on your return are silent winds, nature, and the ruins of the human race. The odd part about all of this is that there's no sign of violence and no bodies to be found. It's as if on a Sunday afternoon, the entire race of man got up and stepped into oblivion. Finally, after searching for some recorded clues as to what happened, you enter an old hospital and find a barely functioning computer terminal with a broken mind link cable, presumed to be used with reading your thoughts, although the, the device is foreign to you. And you also find a booklet labeled WorldNet Emergency Operating Instructions. WorldNet appears to be a global network similar to our World Wide Web, but with a special graphical interface and is broken down into several nodes or functions. They are Central Processing, Homer, which is the storytelling artificial intelligence, Psychology, which provides public psychological profiles of individual citizens, uh, Life Support, there's um, Wasatch, which is a family histories. There's a history section, military, SciLink, SciTech, which is science and technology, geography. There's a medical section. Initially, when you fire up the WorldNet terminal, the data is corrupted from years of non-use and very little of it works. However, if you find a nugget of knowledge in one node, the Homer AI will use that to reconstruct another section and then another slowly helping you build a complete picture of what happened. For instance, you may read about a medical breakthrough that occurred in the year 2030 that then allows the AI to remember a person eight years later that then use that breakthrough to complete some experiment. That then may lead to another story in the future. Ultimately, you and the WorldNet terminal, with the help of the Homer storytelling AI, piece together the puzzle at the center of the game. Having played this game at least twice now, I'm always impressed at the depth at which the developers put into the storytelling. The game is epic and stands with some of the greatest science fiction stories of all time. Now I know what you're thinking. This game is kind of ugly and extremely dated, and I would somewhat agree. However, do not let that stop you from enjoying one of the most unusual and satisfying retro games of the 1980s. Uh, it, it's a shame that not many serious gamers didn't take the plunge when this game was first released, as it was really deserving of the praise that it got from people like me. It was trying to do something new and deliver a story that is rarely told in the world of video games, especially in the 1980s when most of them were sort of arcade games and, you know, joystick twitchers, where along comes this game like Portal, which basically, you know, again, is this interactive novel that has you trying to uncover this really weird mystery at the, at the center of the story. In 
And finally, the original designer, Rob Swigart, released a hardcover edition of the story uh, in 1988, of which I had no idea, which was kind of cool to, to learn, which contained text from the original game as well as some new content to sort of fill it out. Um, I was curious and so did a quick search on Amazon.com, and sure enough, it shows that it was actually re-released in softcover in the year 2001 for only 19 bucks. Um, I was shocked to learn this, so needless to say, I'm definitely going to be buying another copy of that. All right, well, that was Portal by Activision. Classic game. I hope that you guys are able to check it out. Um, if you can get a copy somewhere, if you can play it, I, you know, people who are into retro gaming and, and a little bit different experience should definitely check out Portal. It's such a classic game. All right, take it easy. Thanks for watching.